Uh, some of you know me. My name is David Brashear, and as chair of Annenberg Center's Board of Overseers, I'm truly honored and delighted to be here with you this evening celebrating one of Broadway's and Penn's finest, Mr. Harold Prince. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge a few of the individuals and groups that have made this evening possible. First, Annenberg Center Managing Director Mike Rose. Um, it was less than eight months ago at one of our board meetings that Mike mentioned to the Penn players that Hal Prince might be interested in restaging love music here at Penn. And so from that initial idea, so much has followed and the Annenberg Center has remained central in the mix all along the way, committing considerable financial and staff resources to support every step of the process. I'd like to recognize the Annenberg Center Board of Overseers, many of whom are here with us tonight, and also University Trustee Alan Bell. And I'd also like to thank Hoops Wampler and the Office of Alumni Relations for agreeing to present this award outside of the usual Alumni Award of Merit Gala, and for being such a tremendous partner in bringing this celebration to fruition. Hoops, your ongoing leadership in advocacy for arts and culture here at Penn is just immensely valuable. I'd like to recognize Dan Kuttner, Broadway director and resident associate of Harold Prince. Dan has been commuting daily for the past seven weeks from New York to Philadelphia in bringing the Penn players through all of their rehearsals and into this production. Your commitment is very much appreciated. And Penn players, your enthusiasm, determination, and hard work have taken you far. We look forward to seeing the fruits of your labor here tonight. And we also want to thank the Penn singers who will be sharing their voices in tonight's performance. And finally, Lori McCall and the Platt Performing Arts House for managing and encouraging the 45 plus student performing arts groups that enliven and strengthen this Penn community. And finally, of course, I'd like to thank the man without whom this celebration would not be, and that is the renowned Mr. Harold Prince. Thank you for being here tonight. And now I'll turn over the stage to Penn's distinguished president, Dr. Amy Gottman. Amy. Thank you, David. Welcome, everybody. A special welcome to tonight's honored guest, Penn's own Hal Prince. So as you all undoubtedly know, today is Shakespeare's birthday. How very appropriate. It seems altogether fitting that we are honoring Hal, a true master of the theater, on Shakespeare's birthday. Long before there was something called the global economy, Shakespeare was creating a fantastic world of his own making. The cloud-clapped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself. Through the act of imagining that world, he helped create ours. In much the same way, Hal Prince has helped to remake our world by singular acts of imagination in the world of the theater. The play is the thing. For Hal, like Shakespeare, has the unique perspective of being able to look back across a body of work to see an art transformed. In my lifetime, no one has done more to shape, to recharge, and reinvent the American musical theater than Penn's very own Hal Prince. Hal, you perfectly epitomize the spirit behind the Creative Spirit Award which recognizes a Penn graduate who has created a lasting impact on his field and has also given back to his alma mater. This award could well have been designed with Hal in mind. The truth is, the truth is, 
We've been trying to give Hal this award for years. <laughs> but Hal keeps a schedule that is quite demanding. I'm sympathetic with that, Hal. We are so grateful that tonight's performance of Love Music brings you back to Penn and gives us the perfect opportunity to honor you. The bedrock of the Creative Spirit Award is artistic excellence. Hal's achievements in musical theater are unmatched. In a career spanning six decades, he has been the force behind more than 50, 50 Broadway plays. His shows have taken us to a shtetl in pre-revolutionary Russia, the Kit Klat Club in Weimar, Germany, and aboard a showboat called the Cotton Blossom. He has shown us a demon barber, star-crossed lovers named Tony and Maria, and the first lady of Argentina. We have heard a little night music, the music of the night, and love music. And we have learned a very important lesson. Life is a cabaret, old chum. <laughs> Hal has won 21 Tony Awards, more than anyone else, including a Lifetime Achievement Award. His resume reads like a list of the greatest hits of American musical theater of the last 60 years. The Pajama Game, Damn Yankees, West Side Story, Cabaret, Fiddler on the Roof, Follies, Company, A Little Night Music, Sweeney Todd, Avida, Phantom of the Opera, Revivals of Candide, and Showboat. I am proud to say, and actually pleased to say, I've seen them all some multiple times. <laughs> they are the spice of my life. And I can remember every time I've seen them. Just a few of these triumphs would have made anyone a legend. But Hal has these and many more to his credit. Along the way, he mapped more stars than a Hubble astronomer. Broadway luminaries and legends, including Leonard Bernstein, Stephen Sondheim, Bob Fosse, Gwen Verdon, Liza Minnelli, Zero Mostel, Michael Bennett, Angela Lansbury, Candor and Ebb, and so many others have relied on Hal's work and Hal's special magic. He has the singular ability to recognize the real thing. And in so doing, he no less than transformed the genre. The bubbly notes of mid 20th century American musical theater have become, thanks to Hal, something more adventurous, more inventive, more unexpected. And I would like to think he owes that all to his pen education. <laughs> for Penn, Hal has been as creative in his philanthropy as in his other endeavors. Nearly four decades ago, he gave the university the gift of a share of the royalties of Cabaret. There's an old saying that I'm sure many of you have heard about the theater. You can't make a living, but you can make a killing. Well, Hal showed us how, and we have been reaping the benefits ever since. Those royalties help fund the construction of the Annenberg Center and the Penn Players production we will enjoy tonight. Hal, I want to especially acknowledge how you have also been unfailingly generous in sharing your considerable knowledge with the Penn Theater community. You have served on the Board of Overseers of the Annenberg Center and met with students and faculty and been extremely generous with your time. Recently, Hal and his director, Dan, have taken time from their busy schedules to come to campus to help with auditions and rehearsals for the Penn Players production of Love Music, which will have its premiere here tonight. Here's the best part. Hal was a member of the Penn Players back in his college days, and now this group is presenting Hal's own play. That is very sweet. Hal, it is my distinct pleasure to present you with Penn's 2015 Creative Spirit Award. It recognizes your achievements as both a producer and director 
of many of the greatest musicals of American theater. This is a singular achievement, and we at Penn could not be more proud. It also recognizes you for your continuing commitment to giving back to Penn, the place where it all started. 400 years ago, William Shakespeare needed two plays and six hours of staging to show us how Prince Hal could be made king of all Britons. <laughs> we need none of that. Hal Prince is indisputably the theater's king. And for more than six decades, we have all been his delighted subjects. We are so very proud to count this sweet prince as a true Quaker, red and blue. Thank you, Hal, and ladies and gentlemen, join me in congratulating and thanking our prince, Hal Prince. Thank you. Um, um, that's a very difficult speech to follow. Okay. Uh, I, uh, before I get down to business, I would like to point out that I have a 12-year-old granddaughter who's very intelligent, <laughs> extremely attractive, and very likely will apply to a very important Ivy League university. <laughs> you know, it's a, I, I was telling uh, President Gutman that I, on the way down here in the car, uh, someone said, asked me, uh, when was the last time I was here? And I said, oh, not very many years ago. It was at the 50th anniversary of my graduating class. What was that? And I said, 1998. <laughs> and, I, and I suspect that some of the cast in this performance tonight were born on that year. <laughs> it, it was, it was a, a wonderful time. Uh, the three and a half years, because I got through in three and a half years. The war was on. I arrived at 16 years of age. There were about 200 civilians on campus, and everybody else was in uniform. And at five something in the morning, they would blow reveille, and uh, I'd go to the window very sleepily and watch everybody do their calisthenics and then go back to bed and sleep for another hour or so. But um, it was an amazing experience, and, and I am a firm believer. I mean, th this is not knocking uh, uh, theater education in you know, great theater schools. I have boundless respect for Juilliard and so on, but I have greater respect, or at least I, I think there is more importance in a liberal arts learning than just a, a, a narrow, fixed the, theatrical learning. I think what you want to do is, is soak up as much of the world and life as you can before you enter a career in the theater, or many other careers, or any other career for that matter. But I really do believe that. And um, I would like to think I'm represented because there was no theater course really to speak of. I do, however, and I'm glad you mentioned Shakespeare, uh, my favorite class at Penn, the one that most indelibly is imprinted still in my memory, was taught by a Dr. Otto Harbison and he's written many books, so you know who he is. And, they, uh, and it was a Shakespearean course. 
and the class was the largest classroom on campus. So it was, uh, it was not a very personal experience. You, you were one of 200 or something sitting there, but it was transcendent and extraordinary. And the man would read from Shakespeare and he would impart such enthusiasm for the material he was reading from and for those plays that I think that's probably more valuable in terms of theater education than anything I've experienced before or since. He was my favorite professor. The other thing I'd like to say is this award is, of course, I, I, I wasn't ducking it, I was busy. <laughs> and actually, I'm still busy. I'm happy to say I'm still busy. Um, point is, I, I really think, I, I, I love that you've chosen me, I love what it represents. Uh, when I came to Penn, uh, Penn Players was run by Kaki Marshall, and uh, I was cast in a production of Pride and Prejudice, uh, not in the lead, never in the lead. In fact, not in even any of the attractive swains that wandered in the show. No, I was the dreary, boring uh, preacher who, uh, who uh, courted Elizabeth unsuccessfully. Uh, but I did win the award for best actor on uh, that season. There were very few actors that season. Everybody was in the army. <laughs> well, I thought it was just a great thing to do, and I thought, gee, I, 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 these people really uh, like what I do. Uh, however, it's worth mentioning that that's the last time I was ever cast in a play at Penn Players because people came back from the war and they got all the roles and that was it for me. So instead, I directed, wrote and directed a play. And uh, the play wasn't very good, but I did get an award. I remember it vividly. It was the J. Howard Reber Award. I bet it doesn't even exist anymore. But I, I had my picture taken uh, in front of College Hall with it on my lap, and uh, it was for directing. And I think that's the first award, I know it's the first award I got for directing, and, uh, and so of course it's among the most important. I love being here, I love that, uh, that you've been so generous, all, all of you, in greeting me, that you're here, actually, is pretty swell. And, uh, and I thank you, and I, and I thank uh, everybody uh, at the Annenberg. I, uh, I have a real affection for the Annenberg. I, I, I'm talking too long, but I thought maybe something you don't know is I directed three plays for the Zellerbach stage of, with the Phoenix Theater. And uh, we, did, we did The Visit, and we did Love for Love, and we did uh, uh, oh, there were three directors, so we did a lot of stuff. We did nine plays in three, three successive years, and they started out here, and it's a wonderful facility, really terrific. I knew Mr. Annenberg uh, very, very briefly. Uh, he cornered me and said, I really want to give you some money to do a musical review of Cole Porter's material. And I said, I just, I, I, I admire Cole Porter, uh, surely almost as much as you do, Mr. Annenberg, but I, I don't know whether that's ever gonna happen. I think I knew it was never gonna happen, <laughs> but that's about all you say to Mr. Annenberg. <laughs> Anyway, this is a great evening. I, I, I'll, I'll stop now and just again say thank you to absolutely everybody. It's just terrific. Thank you.
Well, thank you, President Gutman, and thank you, Mr. Prince. It is such an honor for us to have you as such a luminous member of the Penn family. So thank you very much for being here tonight. At this point, I'd like to introduce Vanessa Lamb. She is the president of Penn Players, and she has a few words to say about tonight and this whole project. Thank you so much. About eight months ago, Danny Freed, our business manager, and I were at an Annenberg board reception, and we were talking to Mr. Michael Rose. He came up with the idea to contact Harold Prince to coordinate about our spring show. We looked at each other and laughed. How cool would that be, we said, <laughs> never thinking that these plans would pan out. But somehow, we're standing here today, ready to open the doors to love music. And this is thanks in no small part to Mr. Harold Prince himself. Working with Dan and Mr. Prince and the whole team has been a really eye-opening experience. And I have to say, I think we've all learned a lot from it. It's empowering to think about the fact that Mr. Prince was a student here, balancing the rigorous academic schedule of Penn while also going to tons of rehearsals and making sure Penn player shows would go up, just like the one you're going to see tonight. And also, Penn Players has had the privilege of being at performing in the Harold Prince Theater every semester. Um, and we're not alone in that. We're joined by a bunch of a cappella, dance, and theater groups, all of whom get to work with the Annenberg Center just because of the Prince Theater. Um, and so it's on behalf of Penn Players, not only Penn Players, for this amazing semester of theater and learning and love music, but also on behalf of the entire Penn community for every show that we watch and we perform in The Prince, that I say thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been really great. <laughs> and now I'd like to introduce a group that has been performing in The Prince for the last three years. Uh, they will, they, this fall, uh, performed Sweeney Todd, and tonight we'll be performing from the overture of another classic Harold Prince show, A Little Night Music. Please join me in welcoming the Penn Singers.
Well, thank you, Vanessa, and thank you, Penn Singers. That concludes the formal part of our program tonight, but I hope you'll stay around for our great celebration. And then for those of you who are attending the uh, opening night, Philadelphia premiere of Love Music, doors to the Harold Prince Theater will open at 7.30, curtain time at 8. Enjoy the evening. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>